I want to discuss the misuse of an ingredient in skincare. And as you know, I will be talking a lot about these types of things because the skincare industry is way unregulated, whether it's green or petrochemical, I don't care. Um, there's, it's just a, a, a free for all out there, really it is. So hydrosols versus floral waters. So I'm seeing a lot of companies um, sell floral waters, include floral waters as humectants in some formulations. And I think it's important for me to explain to you what a floral water is and what uh, a hydrosol is, um, what the difference is essentially, so that you know what you are buying for sure. Um, and if, if it's unclear on the website and they use the two words interchangeably, then you can contact the company and make sure uh, you're getting what you think you're getting. So, um, spritzing, um, you know, your face uh, is very popular. There's another video where I talk uh, about a big caveat with regards to this technique of quote, hydrating your face with one of these waters, whether it's a toner, a floral water, or a hydrosol. So first of all, I think I'm gonna start with the simplest version, which is the floral water. A floral water, uh, the best example for a floral water is rose water. So I used to make this in my mother's garden in London. Uh, she had these beautiful English roses. I mean, they were stunning. Um, they were like the vintage kind of roses um, or antique roses. So they weren't um, like the red roses you get, you know, in a shop for Valentine's. These were um, lots of different um, little petals. Anyways, um, so I used to make rose water and I left it in her fridge for ages because I didn't use it all up. But the way I made rose water was to put petals in water and let them sit in there um, until the water was infused with the smell of the petals. And you want to gently heat up the water until the petals become translucent and then you have to quickly take it off the heat and um, quickly pour it into your bottle because if you let those petals uh, brown too much, then your floral water, your rose water, will smell kind of weird. It will smell like you've cooked rose petals. So this technique can be applied to all flowers um, to make a floral water. So it's an infusion here. Um, and the substance you're infusing it is water. Okay, so uh, that is for floral waters. Now hydrosols. What are hydrosols? So hydrosols are essentially, well, there are two ways to make hydrosols. Um, but basically, if you distill plant matter to make an essential oil, um, you will get, at the end, you will get your essential oil, which is the oil, the volatile compounds that have um, evaporated and then been cooling down. And then you've got your essential oils at the top of your little beaker at the end of the distillation process. Well, a little, you know, commercially, it's a huge system. But at the top, you've got your essential oils that float at the surface of the water. And then underneath that, that stuff underneath is the distill uh excuse me the hydrosol which is the 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 water basically that went through the same process but where there weren't any volatile compounds and so um well there are a tiny bit of volatile compounds excuse me i should take that back there are uh, minute amounts of volatile compounds but that are basically so small that they it, it's water basically and so what's nice about the part underneath is it's a much gentler form of the essential oil which is very strong it's very potent it's a very concentrated form of your initial plant matter that was um, distilled with water and then went through the process so I I want to bring this up because so that as I said there are two ways to make this hydrosol. Some companies use the hydrosol as kind of the, the secondary part in the distillation process and will sell the essential oil and then sell the hydrosols. And then the good quality hydrosols basically in the production method, from what I understand, uh, you just gather the, the hydrosol part of it. And then um, we have the t word 
toners. I'm not even going to get into that. The most famous one is witch hazel, um, but the word toners is so misused. I mean, usually it's to signify a liquid that has astringent properties, mainly used by those that uh, have acne prone uh, skin profiles. And, um, but again, really loose terminology here. Um, I can't sort of explain to it what it is to you like I can a floral water versus a hydrosol. So just be aware, usually hydrosol, since they have to go through this process, are going to be more expensive, especially the um, flower hydrosols like rose, like neroli. Um, so now you know what the difference is and I hope that you are a more informed shopper. One more thing to note is that hydrosols are much more shelf stable than floral waters. Floral waters tend to spoil and in fact once you open them, if they're truly natural, they need to be refrigerated. Whereas hydrosols are much more stable, they don't have as long a shelf life as essential oils because there is water inside and water spoils. You will hear me speak about this issue. So if you're getting a hydrosol, it will last longer and you do not need to refrigerate it. I mean, you can if you want something really fresh on your face, um, if you're using it to cool down or to reduce a fever, for instance. But know that, uh, yeah, I know that something like a floral water, like rose water, if it's truly pure, needs refrigeration or a preservative. I do have a video that covers some of the issues around the use of preservatives, which will be linked in the comment section of the video.